I'm good. Thank you for joining us tonight, my friend. Of course. I'm so excited. I'm very proud of you. We have a we have a big turnout tonight, which I'm really excited about. So real quick, I obviously know your backstory. Um, just to give you guys kind of an intro on on her. So she was over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of issue paid premium last year in her first calendar year. So she had started like a little a couple months into um, you know, so she's technically been here like a year and a couple months. Um, but really, truly hitting it hard in all of 2023. Um, Nicole, real quick, for anybody who's new to the call or doesn't know you, can you talk about like your back, your backstory, if you had experience in the industry? What were you doing before you started this? Yeah, so before I started here, I was bartending for about two, 10 years. It feels like it was about 30, but it was only 10. So, <laughs> um, And then I had actually watched Marissa, and I always love telling the story because it's actually hilarious. So I had watched Marissa get into the industry and I watched her for like, I think it was like two and a half years. And at the beginning, she was like, hey, you should come do this with me. Like I heard they make really great money. They get to do this. They get to do that. And I was like, OK, you go do that and I'll you, let me know how it goes. So then she started. She started doing good. About a year later, I think I reached out to her. and I was like, OK, I see you doing pretty good. Send me the study material. She's like, okay, girl. Yep. I'll send it over. I'm like, okay, cool. She sends it over. Don't, she did not hear from me for another, I think like year, year and a half. And then I texted her again. I was like, okay, I think I'm actually ready to do this. I, but I, it's so hard to believe like when you're not actually in the industry, because it's like, it, it just doesn't feel or look real. Right. So finally I got into it and then here I am. So basically long story short, you thought I was full of it. Oh, a hundred percent. So I remember guys, and obviously, you know, I've known Nicole for a while, but I remember I would literally go in like with some of my friends to maybe like have a drink at the bar that she was bartending. And I would tip her like, I would strategically tip her like a lot of money. Like I'd tip her like a hundred dollars just so she knew, because I knew she'd wonder like, how can she just tip me a hundred dollars if she's not doing good? So I'd be like, no, it's fine, girl. Just keep, just keep a hundred. It's all on me. And she'd be like, what the heck? So finally she reached out because I knew she'd be good at it. Right. So Nicole, first of all, I think a lot of people out there like don't understand the opportunity we have here. And and I was the same way. I thought when the person who told me about the insurance industry told me about it, I was like, that's just a, like whatever. So what was it that like, was it just the length of time that I was doing it? Like at what point were you like, okay, maybe this is like something that I could actually be good at, or maybe like I need a change to look into this. So I definitely think the length of time that you were able to continue to be so successful, that definitely played a, a big role, at least in my head. Um, it made it real, right? Like nobody's going to do something for a long period of time if they're not being like successful at it for the most part. Um, and then the other thing is I was just sick of bartending and I was like, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I had my degree in psychology and I was like, they don't make any money. So I'm definitely not going to go into that field. Um, so. So I kind of just made the move. Yeah. Do you wish you had started sooner now? A hundred percent. Yeah, that's crazy. So um, I love that. So you come in and pretty much right off the right off the bat. I mean, did you start in mortgage protection or what was like your initial like? So I started off in final expense for I want to say two months or so. And then I think like the third beginning of the third month is when I switched over to mortgage protection. Um, not because final expense is bad or anything. I mean, it's good. And you love more or final expense. I just am so straightforward and to the point that talking to the very older clients just wasn't for me because they just wanted to talk your ear off. And I was like, no, my calls need to be like 15 minutes or less. And I need to get out of here. So it just mortgage protection definitely played a bigger part in who what my personality than final expense did. Yeah, because you're not a small talker. No. Yeah, I love talking to people. I'm like talking to Mary about her cat and like, did she go on a walk today? And like, I'm on the phone for like an hour and a half. And then I'm like, okay, let's talk about the insurance now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Nicole's like, no, that's not for me. So <laughs> I want to jump back really quick. So when you first started and we were like, Hey, you need to buy leads. A lot of times people get like freaked out by that. Were you freaked out at all? Cause you hadn't re like, were you freaked out by buying leads? Like what was that for you? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely different for me. I remember like, you were like, okay, how much money can you spend? And I was like, I don't know how much money should I spend on, on leads? And luckily I was bartending. So I was making good money. And 
it wasn't as scary because I did have the the funds to do it, but it was still, it was uncomfortable. I would say it was definitely uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm by, I'm putting money into this. Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, now one way that I kind of explain it to all my agents is I look at it more because I was in the, the food industry for so long and the al- or alcohol, the bar industry for so long that now I, I kind of look at it as, you know, people who own restaurants and bars, they can't, um, you can't buy their alcohol or food before they buy it first. So it kind of started making sense once I started looking at it from that aspect of things. Yeah. Right. And I think the thing too, that like for me with leads and again, you buy leads or don't buy leads. But I think for me, when I first got started, Nicole, someone asked me like, if you don't get leads, Marissa, who are you going to sell to? And Mm -hmm. I was like, let me think. Yeah. I don't got nobody. Like I have no no friends. So I'd be definitely screwed. Yeah. I was like, I just, I don't know who I would call to buy my product that I now have a license to sell and help people with like who, who would my list be? right? Right. Um, now other people are different, right? If you look at like Torian or, you know, even Cody Kelly, like setting up life insurance night. So it's not that you can't do it, but mm-hmm. right off the bat, a lot of times people get licensed and then they forget about the part, like having a license is great. Now who is going to get your product? Like, who do you have? So that's why leads for us has always been a very sustainable way to grab some people that already requested the information, call them and get it. Right. And I think um, the other thing is when I first started, when you were talking to me about buying leads and everything. I think I believe in myself enough to be able to know that if I invest in myself, I'm going to do whatever the hell it takes to make sure that I get at least my money back for it. And that's kind of what I've done since. So, yeah, that's huge. Um, Okay, Nicole. So I know you have some notes, right? You had some notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically I put the title of this call because I want, obviously we're going to be really transparent and anything that we talk about in this call, anyone else can implement, right? Like Mm -hmm. Nicole, I I love her, but she's rough around the edges. So she didn't come from, she didn't come from no sales experience. She didn't come from something where it's like, oh my gosh, she's this big spectacular person that has all this, you know, ability to do all this stuff. Like that's what I love so much about her is she's just like, Hey, I never sold anything. I didn't have experience with this. I came in here and now I've done really well. Now you can teach other people to do it. So when someone says like, hey, Nicole, how did you protect 250 families your first year? What's your recipe for that that other people can do? Like, what do you tell them? Okay, so I made a little list here. So number one thing that I was super scared of when I first got into the industry was getting on live dials and like plugging in, right? So I was always, and I was like very, very against it at first. I think my first month or two, I was like, hell no, Marissa, I am not getting on there. I think I would tell Erica over and over again. I'm like, you won't catch me on Zoom. I'm not doing none of that. First of all, I don't like being in front of people. And second of all, I'm like, that's uncomfortable for me because I don't know what I'm doing. Once I actually sucked it up and got on Zoom with everyone, started unmuting, not caring if I was uncomfortable, sounded weird, whatever I thought, that's when I actually started like making sales because unmuting, I was getting advice from everyone. That was like a huge, huge like turning point from me. And obviously uncomfortable in front of people just made me feel better about being uncomfortable on the phone. So it kind of went hand in hand, which was super nice. So you're um, telling, other you're telling me that you're telling me that when someone who had been more successful in the industry told you to do something and you didn't do it, you didn't have the success that you wanted right away. I know, crazy, weird, weird how the <laughs> math, weird how the math is mathing. But I think it's, it's so really weird. Weird. It's so relevant because a lot of people come in and and I did the same thing, right? Like, so I'm not ever saying like, I'm guilty of that too. You think you know what you're doing and like, you think, oh my goodness, other people can get on live dials, but I don't need to, or I'm just going to get better on my own, or I'm going to be a secret agent. But Nicole's like, I, I didn't get better until I started to get uncomfortable and do what they told me to do and get on live dials. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, The next thing would be always holding myself accountable, accountable and not blaming anyone else or anything else. Um, so kind of like going into that. So, um, kind of just realizing if I'm not hitting my goals for the week, cause I would always make goals. If I wasn't hitting the goals for a week, it wasn't Marissa's fault. Cause she didn't call me or so-and-so's fault or Erica's fault. Cause she didn't, you know, get me plugged in good enough or train me good enough or whatever the case may be. It was me. Like I knew that I didn't put enough work in that week. Um, to hit the goals that I wanted to for that specific week. Um, 
And Nicole, as far as training, like, I think that like that can be, you know, training is obviously key, mm -hmm. but do you think like, as far as resources and like availability of managers to help you and like availability of stuff for learning, like it's pretty much readily at your fingertips, right? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. You could literally call anybody and they'll, they'll be there in a minute for you. I've had plenty of people who aren't even on my team, aren't even on this team, reach out to me, ask advice and I, I help them. And it's same, same from if I reach out to somebody else, they'll, they'll most likely always help as well. So if you want to be trained, you can get trained. You just have oh, yeah. to that. Yeah. I think that there's a big difference between wanting to be trained and actually implementing the training um, rather than wanting to be ba babysat, right? So like, yeah, just like I said earlier, you're like, yeah, Marissa, if I'm, I reach out to you for help and you help me, like, you know, I'm going to implement it, but I'm not expecting you to reach out to me every single day and say, well, why are you not at Zoom? Why are you not making these sales today? Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? I have to understand I'm my own business owner and you're just there to mentor me when I need it. But I have to know that you, you know, you have plenty of other people to, to help. So it's not just, I'm not your only agent here, just kicking along. So I love that. So <laughs> two, number two is accountability. I'm taking yeah. notes. So. Oh, perfect. Um, let's see. What else do I got here? Um, the next thing that really has helped me kind of hit the next level is working my leads more than most people. Um, so one thing that I have definitely implemented a lot is if I'm spending money on a lead, like I'm going to annoy the shit out of them. So that's exactly what I do. Just like in my everyday life, if you know me as a friend, I'll probably, I annoy the shit out of you. Desiree knows, Marissa definitely knows. <laughs> so I do that same thing with my leads. <laughs> so I'll call them like probably, I would say on average, like five to six days in a row. If they don't answer, I am definitely sending them a couple text messages at minimum. And that's actually where I book a lot of appointments. So like all of my old leads that I couldn't get a hold of, I finally sat down one day and literally just went through all of them and sent them all the text messages. And I made so many appointments from it where most people, if they can't get a hold of a lead that they're trying to call, they'll just be like, okay, on to the next batch where you're missing out on so many appointments. There's so many different text, uh, text apps and things that you can literally just send a mass text out to a bunch of people and see, I mean, it's not like you can't get a hold of them anyway. So if they don't respond, they don't respond, but there's a chance that you'll get a couple of appointments out of that. And so that's what I've implemented a lot. Um, and I saw Alicia, I think on here said text script. Yeah. If anybody wants my text script, I'll put my number in here. You could just send me over a text and I will send it over to uh -oh, you. Oh, here she goes. Nicole, why don't you just post it in Slack after? Okay, perfect. Okay. We'll post it in Slack. Okay. Um, Okay. And I do think that's really important too, right? Because a lot of times too, and I don't want anyone to get confused, right? The recipe for success is having leads. So whether you buy them or generate them or go to Starbucks and get them, I don't care where you get them. So that's on you, but having leads plus working the leads with intention, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times too, people can say, I bought leads. I bought leads. I have leads. I have leads, right? They're not going to work themselves though. Just because you bought leads, they're not going to call you and say, Hey, Nicole I was wondering if you could get me some life insurance. Say that's not going to happen. So the reality, so the reality is like working your leads plus having the leads, like there's, that's a two part thing, right? Which I think is really important. That's like having, that's like being like, oh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start my diet and I'm going to go to this grocery store because I actually do do this. It's like go to the grocery store and buy all this healthy food. And then I don't eat it though. Cause I still order Wingstop or whatever it is. So the reality is like, that's, that's what it is. Like I, I had the intention because I got the leads, but I didn't actually put in the action to work them. And I think that's really, really important. Um, to let you know, like, and, and here's the, here's the reality too. the cold, hard truth is if you don't do it, someone else will. So Nicole, I want you to talk real quick. Cause you, you run a lot of second chance leads. Like the leads that you buy are like three to $5. You're not getting these crazy expensive leads. Right. They're actually, yeah. So I sent a bunch of text messages out and most of the leads that I sent text messages out to today were actually dollar leads. Um, so it just, I, the one I always say, the three month leads, I think work better for me than the brand new leads that you're going to be spending $25 on or whatever it would be. I ran those for a really long time. I had like a campaign that they would just come in when they called in, I would get them, I'd be the only one who would get them. And I actually did a little experiment one time 
to, to test which one was better. So I, I had those coming in. I also was buying the three month old ones for like $5 a dollar. And I was kind of weighing out the, you know, how many appointments I ran, how much I made off of them. And it ended up being like the three, how, I think it was like at least twice as much as I was making on the new leads is, is what I made on the old leads. And I spent a quarter of the price. So what I've kind of seen is the new leads me when I do mortgage protection, um, the new leads are all people who have like just moved into a house. They're getting a lot of mailers coming in. They're not really financially like set yet on like what their finances are really going to look like. Cause they barely even made their first mortgage payment Their three month one. There's really no one contacting them anymore. There's no one, you know, selling them, not even just mortgage protection, but like all the different things that you get when you first buy a house and they're financially stable and know what their what their bills look like every month. So I've had a lot more success with that and I'm spending a quarter of the price. So it's definitely best of both worlds. Yeah. And I think that's huge too, Nicole, because a lot of people will be like, oh, the more expensive leads or I want higher intent leads or I want newer leads or these old leads are bad. And the reality is like, that's the reason that you do so well is because, you know, respectfully, the people who spent the money on the brand new leads were spending 20, 30, 40, $50 a lead. They didn't dial them with as much intention as you did. They you right. dial them five, six, seven days in a row. You text them multiple times, basically until they block your number, right? Like you, I know you text them until they block your number. So the reality is like, which is why I don't have a number anymore. <laughs> which is why Nicole got her phone number taken away from Verizon or whatever it is. But the reality is like that, that's why you do so well. So it's not about the lead type. It's about what you're willing to do to get in contact with those people. And just to kind of bring it back around guys, it's actually really important. So the reality is like, just because someone doesn't answer today or tomorrow or on Thursday or whatever it is, doesn't mean they don't need the insurance. It just means they couldn't answer the phone today, tomorrow or Thursday. But maybe on Sunday when Nicole sends out her text messages, they're ready and they're like, oh, I can look at this, right? So I think you have to look at clients just like us. Like I'm running around all day today. If somebody had called me, no chance I'm answering the phone. But now tomorrow, if I'm not as busy or booked and busy and running around doing things, like I might have the opportunity to answer the phone. So you can't write off your leads just because they didn't answer you today. Yeah. And I've actually had clients text me back who have like set text appointments and like thank me so much because they're like, oh my gosh, we've been waiting for somebody to call us about this. We want this so badly. We just never, like, we think every call is a spam call now. So we appreciate you going the extra mile and sending that text message. So it's not only like to help my bank, because obviously that's nice, but it's also because clients actually need the coverage. And so they're thankful that, you know, just because they didn't answer the phone call, I'm going the extra mile to send them that text message. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Okay. So we got one, you've been getting online. <laughs> Two, you're accountable to yourself, which I think is huge. Three, you dial your leads with intention. Mm -hmm. Was there a number four? Um, yeah, I think four would be kind of finding like an accountability partner in the business. And poor Desiree, she's stuck with me for life. So good luck with her. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that especially this year, um, I started off this year and was kind of like, okay, I, I have like a different mindset this year than I did last year. And I did great last year, but I'm going to definitely do a lot better this year. Um, so finding like that accountability partner and kind of getting around people in the business who are, you know, wanting to work and wanting to be as successful as you, that definitely makes kind of a, a big, big difference, especially because I mean, we're, let's be honest, like we all have good ways. We all have bad days. Right. So on my bad day where I like, I want to give up and this sucks and you know, I'm not making any sales and I think I lost my touch. Like if I text her, she'll be like, snap out of it. You literally wrote $8,000 yesterday. Get it together. You're, it's one day, keep dialing. And then I'll be like, okay, fine. And I'll keep dialing, keep dialing, keep dialing. And I'll end up making a couple sales later that day. Right. So it's just, Having somebody there who's kind of in your corner definitely has played a big part in success for me as well. Yeah. And I think what's so important too about what you said, Nicole, is the importance of your and Desiree's relationship. And I want to point this out for everybody is that yes, accountability partners is great, but two, they both work guys and they both sell. So make sure when you're talking to people in the business, because I also see a lot of people do the opposite, right? Someone will call me and they'll be like, I was talking to this person the other day and they told me to, and I'm like, that person hasn't sold a policy in six months. Why on earth would you ask them for advice? 
why on earth would you even spend 30 seconds on the phone with them? Like they're not like they're not doing what they say they're going to do. Right. Or somebody will be like, oh, I asked this person and then I'm like, I've never seen that person on live dials ever one time. Why would that person be your accountability partner? Why would why would you let that person give you any advice at all? Are you trying to go where they're going? Are you trying to like are you trying to write zero policies? Are you trying to sell nothing? Because that's the only time I would ask that person for advice. So I think what's super, super important is that like when you're when you're finding people in the business, if you look around and nobody in your circle is doing anything and nobody in your circle is having the success that you want, and quite frankly, nobody's better than you, right? If you're the best person in the room, then you're probably in the wrong room, right? So that's why you always want to be, when you're finding these accountability partners, you want to find someone that's going to be positive, that's going to hold you accountable, that's going to also be working, right? The reason you and Des have grown so close is because you guys are both on live dials calling your clients. It would make zero sense. If you were calling somebody who's inconsistent, like why would you even call them? So yeah. I also say that for those of you that are looking for accountability partners and you're looking for help, like make sure you're being the agent that you would want to help, right? Some people are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe Desiree didn't return my Instagram message. And it's like, dude, you never show up to anything. You don't plug in. You're never on live dials. You don't sell anything. You don't act like you want to sell anything, but you want Desiree Bloss to answer your Instagram message just because you message her. Like give her something to work with. Give her a reason to want to be a mentor to you right? Like be the agent that is that is actually like, hey, I'm putting in my time, I'm putting in my effort, I'm doing everything I can because anybody wants to work with those people, right? So I think that's super important. Um, Nicole, one thing that I think you do realize is your schedule. So what is your, what's your schedule? Because you're not somebody that is like running around doing a bunch of other stuff or trying to do this, you know, one day a week and trying to be a millionaire. Like what, what are the actual hours that you're working? Yeah, so I've gotten a lot better um, at my schedule. It was started off a little rough. Um, but I would say right now I'm probably working Monday through Friday minimum from, I would say like eight or nine, depending on the morning till lately it's been like six, I would say. Um, so just kind of plugging in, making sure that I'm on dials. And if I'm not on dials that somebody like Desiree is texting me, like, where the heck are you? What are you doing? Not that you know, I need somebody that push me, but it's also nice to have that extra little push some days when you don't feel like getting out of bed. Yeah. So what would you say, like, what do you think, like even part-time, right? Cause a lot of people come into this with other jobs, they're doing this part-time. Um, and I would say that's the biggest thing that they can't lock down is like any sort of hours, right? Like you're, you can't sit at the computer for an hour and think that you're going to make 10 grand a month. Like it's not going right. to happen. So for a brand new agent, even somebody who's part-time, like, what do you think is like the minimum? Like if someone wants to just do 10K a month, right? They don't need to do 40 like you, but someone wants to do 10K a month. How many, like when, how much do they need to work realistically? Um, I watched this video the other day and some, and he said, if you're going to be part-time in this business, you have to be full-time at being part-time. So I would say a minimum of like 20 hours a week is what I would guess. But yeah. I mean, it just, I, I don't know, it's hard. It, it just really depends. It's right. like, especially with, especially with telesales, well, and in-home, but with telesales, you know, you, you, I make calls in the morning to set my appointments for that night so that I'm making calls all day in the morning to set my appointments for all day at night or all night, basically. So it's like, yeah, exactly. Two to full, I would say you need a couple full days at least not like two hours one day, one hour one day, three hours the next day. It's kind of like it, it's hard to set appointments and, and do this for with those hours. Right. And I think the reality is like I think you, you mentioned someone else and, and it's like if you want if you want it to pay you like a hobby, right, then you work it like a hobby. Mm -hmm. Like that's the reality. And I think that's what people like. It's, it's, it's work. It's sacrifice. It's grind time. And also I think too, Nicole, how much better – are you now like I know you close your calls in like 16 minutes or something ridiculous but how much better are you on the phone at overcoming objections and getting people that say I'm not interested in being able to come back at them like how much better are you now that you've spent the time than you were when you first started so much better I think that my confidence has just gone up so much um that I'm kind of like and I do my calls quickly because I'm like if you're not going to buy, I'm not going to waste my time on you. Cause there's so many different leads that I need to get through. And so many different clients of people who actually want the the coverage that I'm not going to waste my time with somebody who, who does not So yeah, but I didn't yeah. start off like that. I was trying to put down every, 
every call that I could because, you know, I wasn't confident and I, I was like, I just needed, I needed to get every sale that I could. Right. And I think too, is like, like you have to have time to master the craft, right? So some people will, will call me and they'll be like, well, I called three people and they hung up on me. And I'm like, well, you called three people. Like, tell right. me when you call 300 people, right? Like, that's the only way to get better. It's like, how do you learn to swim? You got to get in the water, right? Yeah. And, and and I think that's I think that's really important is like the reason Nicole's gotten so good is not really because she's any good at all. She's just put in more reps. And over the time that she's put in more reps, she's gotten more confident, right? At the beginning, in your first week or your second week or your first month, if someone says, I'm not interested, you were like, you couldn't overcome it. Right. And then and then maybe third week, fourth week, fifth week, you started to realize, okay, I can overcome that now. And or someone hung up on me and you had to get confident to call them back. Or someone, you know, blocked your number, you had to get confident, like whatever it is, all of that stuff is repetition and you have to have a big, you know, sample size to be able to determine if you're getting better. Right. Yeah. A brand new agent that comes in on their first day and they're like, Hey, I had three people hang up on me and told me they're not interested, or I had two bad numbers, or this. I'm like, dude, I'm I, you dialed for one hour. Like call me when you dial for 200 hours, right? Then that's how we know that you're getting better. Like it's just, it's all repetition and, and putting in the time and training just to do it over and over and over again until you you develop those muscles like in your brain, right? Yeah, and I think going off of that too, that also goes with the, the products, right? So like one thing that I have noticed a lot while hiring agents is, and I was like this at the beginning too, everybody wants to know every single thing about every single product before they start making calls. And it's just like getting hung up on, right? So you're you're not going to know the objection. You're not going to know what to say to every objection until you continue to do it and continue to get those objections to overcome. And that's basically the same thing as the products. Like you're not going to know. I didn't know anything about any sort of product when I first started calling. I just learned while I was going. Yeah. And that's one thing you're not going to, you're not going to know every single thing about every single product before you start dialing. It's just not going to happen. You're going to learn when you start selling those products. Right. And I think that's really important too, because then also you only learn the stuff that you need to learn. Like you don't need to learn about the Transamerica product if you're never going to write the dang thing. Exactly. Right. The best time to learn about the America product is when you're in the application, right? The best time to learn about it is when you have a client on the phone. Because the reality is you're going to have a brain full of knowledge and you're not going to have, you're not going to have any sales, right? You're going to know every product you could ever know and you won't have any clients on the phone. So don't like, and I do think that um, a lot of new agents do that. And I did that too, right? I was like, well, I don't even know. I'm not, I'm very unfamiliar with this. So we have the resources guys, but the best way to do it is truly to just get on the phone, get uncomfortable until you get good. Mm -hmm. So um, Nicole, I think you've been absolutely phenomenal. I think the thing about you guys, <laughs> like Nicole's like, she's so like matter of fact that like what she's telling you really is just what she did. Like that's how matter of fact a person you are. Um, so I'm hoping this is just easy for people to implement anything that you, any other advice that you want to leave us with, if you're like a new agent or someone that's struggling to get started, I mean, you kind of gave them the four points, but anything else that you think is really important for these guys to know so they can go out and start crushing it? No, I think just putting in the work, like you can say all you want that you want to, you know, do this and you want to do good at it. And, but, but you're not going to get good. Like we said, until you actually just put in the work and, and not rely so much on everyone else. Just if, if you want to make it work, there's, like we said, there's so many, so many different things out there. So many different people that, that are willing to help you that there's no reason why you can't be successful in the business. If you just sit down and put in the work. Yeah. Nicole, um, Ileana wants to know how much you spend on weeds, uh, on weeds weekly, leaves weekly. <laughs> um, it just depends on how much I'm, it, anywhere, I would say anywhere between probably a thousand and two thousand a week. So minimally a thousand. Oh yeah. Minimally. That's huge. Um, okay. And then the other thing that I think is really important is, so you, you got to the point where you can do, um, I mean, you can write 250 grand in a year and you have no problem. You can do 40 grand a month. So you have no problem. Um, the reality is like, why do you still get on live dials? Like, why are you still there every single day? Because every time you make a sale, you do it unmuted for the team on live dials. Why do you still do that when you don't need that? Um, Because I want to be there to help everyone else. On top of accountability for myself as well. But I like, you know, just I think that it's nice. I like listening to other people and I learn every day from other people as well. Still, you know, but. I think just being there to to make sure that everybody else is 
able to hopefully one day get to where I am, just like I want to get to where other people are. Yeah. And I think that's huge, you guys. And I bring that up for a reason that one, even no matter how good you get, you still have to stick to the basics, right? If a new agent is supposed to be on live dials, like doesn't matter how good Nicole is, she's still on live dials, right? And then the other thing too, is that like, like she said, if you're someone who's like, oh, I'd really love to learn from her. I really don't know why I haven't seen her before. I'd really love to hear her script because I'll get messages after this that says, I'd really love to listen to Nicole close. Guys, Nicole's on our public Zoom every single day, closing sales left and right. So if you want to get better and you want to learn what she does, she's on every single day showing you exactly word for word what she does. She doesn't mute out. She doesn't mute out the calls that she gets hung up on. She doesn't get, you know, she doesn't mute out the calls that she gets told to screw off. I'm not getting it, whatever it is. Like she's there every single day. So if you want to learn from her, you just have to get on and immerse yourself in the culture and immerse yourself in the training and immerse yourself getting better. Um, I think that's phenomenal. Um, Nicole, anything else? I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward and I'm excited. Oh, wait, I have one more question. Why okay. do you think that why do you think that we why do you think people don't get on live dials? I know it's uncomfortability, but like even after a call like this today, Nicole, can we get a hundred people on live dials tomorrow making sales? Like, why can't we do that? I would hope we could, but for some reason, a lot of people will just get off this call and be like, oh, this was so great and be motivated for the night and then tomorrow be nowhere to be seen. So hopefully we can, because I promise you, if you start getting on live dials and actually unmuting and listening to, to agents who know what they're doing, the it's just going to build, it's going to speed up your process so much, so much quicker. 100% guys. And we're here to help you. Like we're literally on Desi's on Nicole's on like any of you, right? There's 125 people on this call. Like there's 125 people that can be protecting families, getting better, getting your training in, getting your reps in. Alex Praz is on there every single day. He's booked by like noon though, because he books really fast. So if you're doing in-home appointments, guys, there's people on there doing in-home, like the team is here to help you. And we have so many amazing people like Nicole that are willing to help people that like she derives no benefit from. So guys, let's have a killer week. Nicole, we love you. We're proud of you. Rookie of the year, Hall of Fame this year, or we'll never have, we'll never ever have you on a team call ever again if you don't hit Hall of Fame. So make sure she's going to do 400 this year. Um, And anything we can do to help, obviously, we're really proud of you. I love you guys. And I will see you guys in two weeks on this call, but I'll see you guys tomorrow on Live Dials, getting uncomfortable and getting some families protected. 